Welcome to the second lesson in Web Automation with Leapwork. In the first lesson, we looked at the basics of building a flow, and we used a simple login form as the example. In this lesson, we will look at how we can reuse parts of the flow by creating reusable subflows. And we will also look at how to parameterize the subflows to make them even more reusable. We will continue with the login form and the flow we built in lesson one. Performing a login could be part of many web automation flows. In some cases, all flows will include a login at the very start of the flow. So the login process is typically a good candidate for a reusable subflow. To create a subflow, you simply select the building blocks you want to make into a reusable component. You right click and then select Create Subflow. We name it Login and press Save. We now see that all the selected building blocks are wrapped up into one new building block named Login. This is the subflow, and we can find it in the list of building blocks under the category Custom. Or we can navigate to it in the tree view. A subflow is like a custom block that we create from existing building blocks and it can be reused in as many flows as we want. If you make changes to a subflow, the changes are automatically reflected in the flows that includes the subflow. So from a maintenance point of view, creating subflows is a good idea. If we double click the subflow, it opens up and we can refine the selected building blocks. They are now surrounded by some special building blocks, execution input and execution output. These blocks define how the subflow can connect to other building blocks. So they basically define the green connectors on the subflow. This also means that you can design your subflow to have multiple output connectors if the flow branches into the subflow. Another very useful feature with subflows is parameterization. Instead of hard coding the values inside the subflow, we can define input parameters to the subflow, allowing the flows that includes the subflow to provide the actual values. Adding a parameter is very easy. Simply add a value input building block and double click on the header to change the name. In this case, we will use it to parameterize the email address. So we pull the blue connector from the input parameter block to the text value property on the type web text block, just like this. The blue connectors are used for transferring values and properties between building blocks. So adding the parameter block to the type web text means that any value added into the parameter will be inserted into the email field. We do the same with the password field. Add a value input building block and rename it to password. When we save the subflow and move back into the flow, we now see that the subflow has two new input parameters defined, email and password. To specify the email address, we use a set text building block that we connect to the email parameter. I specify the email address and do the same with the password. In the next lesson, we will look at how to use external data sources like Excel or databases to input the data to the subflow. We are now ready to run the login flow, this time using a reusable parameterized subflow.
and the flow ended in status passed as expected. In this lesson, we have looked at how you can reuse parts of a flow in other flows by creating subflows. We looked at how we can add parameters to a subflow to make them even more reusable, and we introduced the blue connectors, which are used to transfer values between building blocks. Thank you.